WillNisley.com. Will Nisley. As many of you saw on a meme earlier this week, Fridays are awesome. I'm Carl Azus at the CNN Center. Your 10 minutes of world news explained begins with the countdown to Brexit. The British exit or separation from the European Union has officially begun. Nine months after a slim majority of British voters chose to leave the EU, British Prime Minister Theresa May signed Article 50 this week. That's what gives any EU member the right to leave the association on its own. One reason why the Brexit is so incredibly complicated is legal. Right now, there are 12,000 European Union laws in force in Britain. They apply to businesses, consumers, workers. And since 1972, these EU laws have taken precedence over Britain's own laws. With that changing, as the nation separates itself from the EU, it has to convert those laws to suit its own country. So some will be kept, some replaced, some eliminated. One Brexit official says a government priority was getting the right deal for every single person in Britain. Lawmakers have two years to figure out how to do that, but it's only one of the challenges they face. This has just never been done before. Unpicking 40 years of treaties and agreements covering thousands of different subjects. The UK has just two years to extricate itself from the European Union. Vast negotiating teams on both sides will work round the clock to try to reach some sort of deal. And they're gonna start by looking at the breakup. Some of the issues they're going to have to tackle include what they're going to do with Brits living in Europe, what they're going to do with Europeans living in the UK. How are they going to leave this trading block, the single European market? And will London keep its status as the go-to financial hub for Euro trading? The biggest problem, though, is what some EU officials see as a massive lingering bill. Britain should, they say, be paying billions of dollars for years to come into ongoing projects that they have a stake in. Once they do reach a deal, 20 of the EU heads of state, representing at least 65% of the total population, need to approve it. Also, the UK Parliament needs to approve it. And what if they don't? Well, you could extend the negotiations, but all sides would have to agree to that. The alternative would be Britain just leaving the European Union, and the UK will have to fall back on World Trade Organization rules. Alongside all of this, they're going to have to reach a new set of deals as well to establish a new relationship between the EU and the UK. What about things like security, new trade deals, enormous projects to consider alongside that main deal? Up next, we're coming face to face with a middle-aged man who's actually from the Middle Ages. He lived 700 years ago, but now people can look into his eyes and see that he looks a lot like many folks do now. Here's what this is all about. The University of Cambridge reconstructed the face of a man who was buried in the 13th century. His skeleton was one of 400 others found under the old divinity school of St. John's College. The site was excavated a few years ago. It was one of the largest medieval hospital graveyards in Britain. To better understand life at that time, researchers analyzed the man's bones and reconstructed his face in an attempt to find out his life story. They say he was an ordinary poor man at that time, that he was probably a patient at the hospital where he was found, that his skeleton indicated he'd done a lot of physical labor in his life, and that when he died, he was over 40 years old. He lived as one of Cambridge's urban poor. It's a group of people that are very hard to find out about from history because historical records are based around mostly property. And if you didn't have wealth or were taxed, then very often you would not actually show up in the historical records. This was done as part of a project called After the Plague. It aims to humanize people from the past. 10 second trivia. Who painted La Bella Principessa, The Last Supper, and The Battle of Anghiari? Michelangelo, Leonardo, Donatello, or Raphael? These are the works of Leonardo da Vinci, one of whose most famous paintings is the Mona Lisa. Okay, you've heard of the Mona Lisa. You probably haven't heard of Lisa del Giacondo, whose portrait some scientists think was painted over in making the Mona Lisa. Pablo Picasso apparently painted over someone else's portrait to create his work, The Old Guitarist. Same thing for Vincent van Gogh in painting Patch of Grass. 
One thing these findings all have in common, they were discovered decades or centuries later using modern scientific instruments. Here's how some researchers solve or find historic mysteries of art. A painting will change from the moment it's made, and so there's no chance of restoring it to the way it looked when it was first made. But you can appreciate how it might have looked by doing the research that's needed, and then present it in the best way it can be presented. With these new tools, it's become a little bit easier to find out more about painting techniques and to find out in more detail about materials. For example, use a handheld X-ray fluorescence spectrometer to look at areas of a painting and look at the kind of elements they contain. We learn quite a lot from people X-raying pictures and X-rays will penetrate all the way through the painting. So you can see aspects of the whole thickness of the picture. And sometimes you can see the frame and the nails that have been used to hammer the canvas in. Sometimes you can see reworkings in paint. So you can see things that you can't see on the surface. There are different devices that are used for infrared photography. So you can do an infrared photo on a specially adapted camera. You might see something beneath the varnish. You might see drawing underneath the paint layer. So you might find a picture under another picture or a drawing underneath a picture that's been covered up with a completely different picture. There are always new discoveries to be made. Each of these techniques tells you something different. To make you a good conservator, I think that you need all those elements. Eventually, you know, everything changes and everything deteriorates. Although we now use materials which we hope will last at least a hundred years, inevitably um, pictures will need to be cared for. And those, those works that have been cared for, now we retain them, we, we benefit from that, we can still see them, and the things that have been very neglected, we, we've lost them. So that's why conservation is important. If you were on our email list, you would have known last night what was in today's show. From our home page, just scroll down to keep in touch to sign up for our daily email. Also from our home page, if you want to see the show transcript while you see the show, just click the word transcript under the video. That'll take you to where you can watch and read along at the same time. It's amazing and a really good idea. Now for a really questionable idea. You see this? It's a design company's concept to put the sky in skyscraper. It's a floating building. How does it float? We are so glad you asked. What architects would do, if they could, is string up a skyscraper with high strength cabling and fasten it to an asteroid that's orbiting the Earth. They say it'd be lightweight, that it'd be solar powered, it could get its water from clouds. It'd also be strung up from an asteroid. Its cost of construction, they say high but that the skyscraper would also command record prices. Guess they wouldn't run out of space. But if demand were sky high, if tenants could scrape together the funds, and if they could get over the suspense of living suspended, maybe it's not just a tall tale. Just as long as no one steps outside for a walk unless his name is Luke. I'm Carl Azuz, and that's 10 out of 10. Hey guys, if you want to get active on my channel, if you want to get that latest stuff, if you want to get the latest blog posts, then click or tap the subscribe button right up here. You can also check out my website with the latest posts right down here. And you can view a random video for yourself right over here. Also, I encourage you guys to check out the description down below.